Welcome to Azure. Today was supposed to be a rest day, but I'm here filming two videos, and I'm actually excited to film this one in particular because I just listened to the Gary Vee and Mark Zuckerberg podcast that just went live a few days ago. I listened to it twice, actually, and took notes the second time. So I want to break down the podcast. There's actually a lot of things I think most people are going to miss out on. There's a lot of subtle things that I'm always able to pick up on because I've just always been an observer my whole life. And I think there's a lot of things from this conversation that you wouldn't be able to realize until it hit mainstream unless you watch this observation video because there's some subtle little hints and observations I found um, through listening to Gary and Mark talk. So if you're excited to get into the video, smash that thumbs up button so I know. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already with the bell on so you don't miss any videos in the future. Subscribe with the bell so you don't miss any new videos. I know a lot of people are, are missing some of my videos and not coming up on the, on the recommended. So make sure you do that and let's get into it. So I thought about playing and doing like a reaction video, but that was going to take like at least 45 to an hour. So we're just going to break it down. I'm just going to assume you actually watched the interview. If you haven't already, please go watch the interview first. Uh, don't just take what I have to say about it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is where the metaverse uh, is headed and where social media is headed and where social interaction will truly become futuristic. Uh, my take for what the future is going to look like is, do you guys remember those YouTube videos back then? Like five, 10 years ago uh, and pictures and stuff of like, this is what the future is gonna look like, spaceships, people flying around, flying saucers, aliens, like doing crazy shit. And I'm like, you know what? That's literally the metaverse. It's not gonna be real world. Well, it's gonna be sort of real world, like augmented reality, virtual reality in a metaverse. But that's where the futuristic shit's gonna happen. Like we can fly around, we can do whatever the fuck you want. So I think it's kind of funny that, uh, that that's literally gonna come true in the next few years. The, the metaverse to me today feels like the next frontier in social connection in much the same way that social networking did when I was getting started back in, in 2004. And so this is a big topic that Zuckerberg and Gary Vee talked about with social media and how it kind of grew up with cell phones at the same time. They were kind of paired together. And now we're actually growing a little bit of, apart from the cell phones. We're doing augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, video games and stuff. And uh, it's still remaining visual though. It's still a video focused thing. So basically, video is replacing cell phones, meaning we're headed toward augmented reality glasses, augmented reality contact lenses, metaverse, arcades, with like, like VRs and shit. Like that's where we're headed, guys. You now, social media kind of grew up with the smartphone. Because of that, I feel like the smartphone sort of grew in a way that it's somewhat limiting in terms of the, the type of social experiences that you could have. Our platforms should be designed around people interacting with each other. I think mean, that's like how we process the world as people. And um, and that's just not how, how phones are designed. They're designed around apps today. And Gary asked him how far away we are from like contact lenses or like what, what that even looks like as far as augmented reality. But he said contact lenses are a bit further away just because that's a totally different like, technology that's not even really... It's not time yet for that. We need to we need to do more before we're acclimated to the point where people are okay saying, yeah, let's put this in my fucking eye. Do you think that there's a chance that this is a contact lens game? I think that that's quite a bit further off just because, you know, think about it. It's like wh whatever is projecting the image needs to have an internet connection. It needs to be powered. But AR glasses, I think we're gonna start seeing things that look like normal looking glasses, but that can project holograms into the world. Um, you know, within the next, Five years. Gary Vee touched on Pokemon Go and asked Mark Zuckerberg what he thought about it, if he was paying attention to it, if he thought it was augmented reality or he, what he thought about it. I consider it to be more of a location-based game than an augmented reality game. The core mechanic is that you're going to a place. Um, and so you could do that with augmented reality or not. You know, filters, face filters, different effects like that. Um, like what you see in Instagram and, and Snapchat. Yep. I think that that's a, that's a real thing that's, that's I think is real augmented yep. reality. I agree. Um, One really, 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 really important thing that a lot of people watching these videos need to understand because a lot of people are trying to start NFT projects, opening their own brands, trying to do their own thing. And that's amazing. But what you need to understand is Facebook has been working on VR for almost a decade now, and they haven't said anything till this year, really. And they bought the Oculus uh, One a few years ago, but no, that wasn't like a crazy thing. Like no one made a big deal about that, really, uh, compared to like them buying Instagram or WhatsApp. And so it's really, really important that you understand that progress and work, they like go hand in hand. You don't just finish one day. Like... It's a work in progress all the time, and it's likely gonna take 10 times longer than you think. I started making videos on YouTube 10 years ago. It took me 10 years to find the algorithm. We've been talking about this internally for many years, right? I mean, so we've been working on these VR devices for, for seven years. The most effective way to communicate to the organization 
a level of commitment to something is to go say it externally. This was probably my favorite and it was probably the most important piece of the entire podcast. Meta has become the premier place that if you care about these problems, you wanna go work on them. I just think that when you plant a flag and say that you're gonna go do something, you get haters and criticism, criticism. Of course. but you also get the people who actually care about that thing and wanna make it uh, happen uh, are attracted to the people who I think have the courage to go say, I'm gonna go make this happen even though it's really far off. What I've found in, in my career is that it's better to not be timid about that, right? And, and to not um, you know, pretend that you're something that you're not, um, to try to appease critics. I think, you know, the more that you can just be honest to who you are and what you want to go do, I think you'll you'll kind of get the right people to join your team. You'll get the right investors, you'll get the right partners. And I think that that's kind of how you how you move forward. That's literally the the cornerstone of my brands. Like, yes, I'm gonna do some clickbaity videos every now and then. But if you go through my archive of videos, nine out of ten of them aren't clickbaity. They're not stupid whatever videos to get like new viewers and new subscribers. Like my main focus is fostering the community I already have and building on that and being honest and being transparent with you guys and and telling you exactly what I'm doing at all every step of the way. And I've done that for the past year on my YouTube channel. Like I recorded podcasts when and made YouTube videos when I literally had nothing to film. I was there's videos on my channel you can find where I'm sitting there on camera in the video saying I literally don't know what I'm filming. I, I don't know what to do, but I should probably film because I want to do YouTube. And so I'm going to film a day in the life or something, or I'm going to make some shit up or, and you have to do that, you know, and that's just how brand is built. And I'm only here at this point now because of all those days. Mark Zuckerberg and Gary Vee are both an example of what happens when you stick to your convictions, you're stubborn, and you don't give up and you just stick it out in the long run. When Facebook changed from you going to somebody's wall and leaving a comment to this news feed, it was fucking carnage. Immediately, people lost their mind and now that is the core way every social network was built in. So Mark actually talked about he wants to focus on user interaction and social connection over what social media has been. And I secretly think this is what Mark's passion is. I've always thought He's always come alive when he talked about user interaction, connection, and he always clammed up and became a robot again when he had to talk about legal stuff, you know, social media, technicals. I don't think that's where his passion is. I think his passion is very, comes from an authentic, genuine place. Uh, not saying anything he's done or messed up on is like forgiven or like should, like not, not saying he gets a, a free pass, but I'm saying regardless of what he did or didn't do in the past, I think this is something that he's very, very, very passionate about building the metaverse and building this social interaction world. Obviously the naysayers are going to say he's doing it so he can take all their money and information. And maybe that's part of it, but I genuinely think he actually has passion for this. And our work to build the metaverse encompasses both building social experiences and building these future platforms like um, VR and AR. It's got to be both, right? You want to be able to jump into the metaverse and a 3D experience from your Instagram feed. Mark also talked about how he wants the metaverse to be an all-in-one inclusive little world as if you were just carrying a little magical purse like in Harry Potter with Hermione Granger with like that purse that just never ended. You could stick your hand in and pull out like an elephant. Like that kind of thing where it's just you have all your NFTs, your skins, your avatars, all your shit. I think the atomic unit in the metaverse is going to be about um, you and, and, and kind of the, your stuff and your friends and your connection, right? So you're gonna, you're gonna have your avatar and you're gonna have your digital clothing and, and your digital tools. And unlike apps today um, that are kind of all designed to be a little bit siloed and you have to do all this extra work to get them to work together, um, in the metaverse, I think it's gonna be fundamentally more interoperable. And then he wants it to be more about expression rather than social identity as like a flex, but he knows that he's not naive. He knows obviously they're gonna have to go hand in hand, but he wants the metaverse to be a place where expression is a little bit more, in, not enforced, but pushed, empowered. You know, like a lot of content that goes viral these days sucks. And I think he really wants to change that narrative. A lot of people think about this as, as kind of commerce and I think a lot of it is actually really expression, right? which is the core social Correct. dynamics. So the intersection between that expression and your identity and then the commerce around that, especially if we can get it to be interoperable so it's a more fluid market, I think is just gonna be a really 100%. big deal. Uh, uh, much bigger than I think people people sort of internalize today. One thing that was super funny that humanized him so well was he, he was talking about how he literally used his t he used Tinder so he could understand what it's like from a consumer end. And he used, you know, he bought, he like used all these random apps because he was like, I have to know what it's like to be on here as a legit user, like coming on every day, posting or whatever. And he was like, I had to do this. And he said, you have to remain curious. If you stop being curious and you stop innovating, that's where you're, that's where everything you built 
starts to crumble down. And you were like running a big company and sure enough, at very late into the night, you were literally clicking around, meeting people randomly. A, do you I mean, remember I feel like that? You gotta, you gotta use the stuff firsthand. At some point I decided that I really needed to understand how dating apps worked. And <laughs> at this point I was like, you know, I've been dating Priscilla for a long time, or we may have yep. even been married already. And yep. so I was like, look, Priscilla, it's like, just so you know, like I'm going to, I'm going to, um, Sign up for some dating apps. Um, and, Mark, and somebody like, connect me with can, the we can do this together, on Tinder but is the greatest thing I could ever imagine. If you want to be in the game building stuff, you, you, your hands you really right. should My remain man. curious. Yep. Now, I do have a recommendation, Mark, if you're listening, that I'm surprised Gary Vee didn't tell you. Uh, you need to post more human stuff. A, a, a Q&A for five minutes every six months is even better than what you're doing. Like. Maybe you are putting out content, but I'm not seeing it and no one else is seeing it because everyone thinks you're a robot, fam. Like, I don't think you're a robot. I genuinely think you're a normal ass dude. You just happen to be in your position. You worked really hard to get there. Like, were you a collector? As a, were you a comic book? Like, did you collect as a kid? I, so I, I was pretty into baseball cards. I mean, baseball, I think, is really like nerd's game. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's so, math. Um, you're yeah, a nerd. Your problem is like everyone looks at you and thinks of the social network. You're a crazy, robotic, not... You know, not empathetic, no personality, just like a weirdo dude who just focuses on selling apps and shit. And that's, that's, I feel like that's how the social network kind of painted that character. And when you go online and the only videos that are circulating are you at fucking court looking like a kid in detention, just trying to get out and go home. It's just, it's not a good look and it, and it doesn't, definitely doesn't help you. And it doesn't help your brand as you're the head, you're the figurehead, you know? Um, and I think you could do more. I, th I think you could do a lot more actually. And I would love to extend an offer to, for you to come on my podcast and maybe allow me to do a little bit of a, a common person's interview of you. So if you're interested in that, that'd be, that'd be crazy actually. And also Gary Vee, if you want to talk, I would also love to fucking interview you. But anyways, uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little review. I tried to outline some of the things that are really important that a lot of people probably missed. And um, I hope you learned something. If you did, smash that thumbs up button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already with the bell. And if you want to see more of me right now, click on one of these boxes on the other side of me. Until next time, continue on your joyage. Continue to learn. And be grateful you're alive watching this video.